Hi everyone, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com and Miss Spidey is not moving today and that's okay because she can do whatever she wants. Uh, but she is a Chilean rose hair and uh, the beautiful star of the channel. And uh, I hope she moves. I hope I always hope that she'll actually do a little walk around for you guys, but usually she just wants to sit still and rest. Uh, her life is very exhausting being a good spider. Anyway, today I wanted to share something really, really cool that I found um, because you all know if you've been on this channel before that one of my favorite things about keeping tarantulas is observing their behavior, either through my own observations or through things that I read or what other people are observing and learning about them. And this is an animal that we still know very little about, much like many other creatures that you know aren't necessarily learned like mainstream animals or pets to keep, um, or even animals that are highly respected in our world. So one thing in particular that really, really does interest me is the possibility of higher intelligence in these creatures. Like right now, with our current understanding about tarantulas and many insects and the creatures is that like there is like zero intelligence going on, no brain, like there is just nothing happening there. and that is completely possible. However, in my research and in my curiosity, I have definitely come across a lot of articles and a lot of people talking about the possibility of cognitive abilities in tarantulas or insects that we once found or animals that we once thought had zero intelligence as well. And so I tend to think that you know anything is possible. Um, if we actually took the time to study it and find out what is actually going on. Uh, I do not believe that humans know everything. I think that we actually don't even know how much we don't know. And so this is just a general place that I enjoy studying, a, a subject that I enjoy studying. And even if we find out that tarantulas actually do have zero intelligence, um, I enjoy learning about the figuring out process that people are taking. So anyway, I'm going to be doing a lot of reading from my notes because this is quite an article and I'm not going to remember any of it. So um, this was about um, scientists from the University of Tokyo um, proposing a new model for the evolution of higher brain functions and social behavior in Hymenoptera, which is actually a large group of insects, um, actually 150,000 species of insects, uh, which also includes uh, wasps, bees, and ants, and sawflies. So they are now thinking about their possibly being higher brain functions in these animals. And so while that's not directly about tarantulas or spiders, I think we're getting very, very close. So that's very exciting. Um, and so what these scientists did was compared the Kenyan neural cells, oh, Kenyan neuronal cells in the mushroom bodies, which is parts of the insect brain structuring the processes of sensory integration, memory, and learning of primitive, primitive in quotes, sawflies, and more sophisticated honeybees. And what they discovered was that three specialized Kenyan cell subtypes in the brain of honeybees may have evolved from a single multifunctional Kenyan cell subtype ancestor. So this helps scientists figure out how or learn how insect behavior has evolved. And they're saying that these findings might actually shed new light on the evolution of the behavior or more complex organisms, including humans. And here's a direct quote, which I'm gonna to have to read. Um, and this is from senior author Takeo Kubo, who is a professor of animal physiological chemistry at Tokyo. This is what he said. In 2017, we reported that the complexity of Kenyan cell, which are abbreviating it as KC, subtypes in mushroom bodies and insect brain increases the behavioral diversification in that class of insects, the Hymenoptera. In other words, the more KC subtypes an insect has, the more complex its brain and the behaviors it may exhibit. But we don't know how these different subtypes evolved. That was the stimulus for this new study. So this is what they were trying to clarify. And so these researchers chose two Hinoptera species that engage in highly different behaviors, such as the solitary turnip sawfly, and that, that 
creature, this insect, has a single KC subtype and the sophisticated social honeybee, which actually has three KC subtypes. The experts use transcriptome analysis to identify the genetic expression profiles of these various KC sub subtypes to reveal the potential evolutionary pathways between the primitive sawfly brain and the honeybee's more complex one. And co-author Hiroki Kono, who is the assistant professor of biological sciences at Tokyo said, I was surprised that each of these three KC subtypes in the honeybee showed comparable similarity to the single KC subtype in the sawfly. Based on our initial comparative analysis of several genes, we had previously supposed that additional KC subtypes had been added one by one. However, they appear to have been separated from a multifunctional ancestral type through functional segregation and specialization. So as the numbers of those subtypes increased, each of them seemed to inherit various properties from an ancestral KC and later on involved in different ways, leading to varied current functions. And to clarify how the ancestral KC functions are present in both sawflies and honeybees, what the researchers did was they trained the sawflies to perform common honeybee behavioral tests in which they learned to associate an olfactory stimulus with a reward. And honeybees actually have a gene called the cam... Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I'm just going to put on the screen. <laughs> Um, they have a gene that contributes to long-term memory formation, which is fascinating. And so the experts manipulated this gene in sawfly larvae, and when the larvae grew, their long-term memory, memory was impaired, suggesting that this gene plays a similar role in both species. So I guess what they're saying is that they're finding that sawflies, which are generally a very like primitive insect that doesn't have really much intelligence um, when compared to a complex honeybee, and uh, they found that in modifying that gene that um, the sawflies couldn't really do that long-term memory function, which they would have been able to. So I guess what they're saying is that sawflies can also do long-term memory stuff like the honeybee. And they found that while this gene is expressed across the entire KC subtype in sawflies, in honeybees it is expressed in only one KC subtype, suggesting that its role in long-term memory was transmitted to a specific KC subtype in honeybees. I always love when there are implications uh, with insect research that can apply to human or mammal research because I think that we there's like this weird divide where we just like think that we are just so different <laughs> and there's actually so much shared genetics and across species, and I think we're always learning. Uh, but this article did say that though mammalian brains are significantly larger and more complex than those of insects, better understanding the evolution and diversification of KC subtypes could shed new light on the evolution of social behavior in mammals, including humans. And lead author Takeyoshi Kuwabara, a doctoral student at Tokyo, said there are many mysteries about the neural basis that controls social behavior, whether in insects, animals, or humans. How it has evolved still remains largely unknown. I believe that this study is pioneering work in this field. And so that study was published in the journal Science Advances. I couldn't agree more. I think it's really cool that we're finding out that, you know, more simple insects um, actually share the genes or have evolved the genes to more complex ones. And so very, very cool. I hope to see more stuff, especially very more towards spiders. Um, so that was, that was kind of like a long, uh, I guess, complicated, a uh, technical article, but I think it's important to share because I, I readily find these studies, um, on the internet and I don't normally see them being shared in tarantula groups online or forums. And so, um, I think that, you know, if my curiosity can help spread this, you know, random pieces of information that might actually eventually pull, push, uh, tarantula research forward or encourage scientists to do more tarantula research. Um, I'm always happy to share that stuff and also to get your thoughts on it too, because um, I know I'm not alone in wishing there was more information about tarantulas out there and, you know, also being excited about the ways that we are finding way, new avenues of studying and new technologies of studying tarantulas and spiders. So anyway, guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. 
and I will see you next week for Tarantula Tuesday. Please let me know what you think about this in the comments and if you have anything else to add to that. Take care. Bye-bye.